Hey everybody, buckle up. Today I'm going to teach you how to make some sick beats using GarageBand. This is a free program that comes with any Mac computer and you can do some really really fun stuff with this thing. So here's the, the opening window, first time you open this, or any time you open it and you want to make a new project. Um, I don't know that it necessarily matters which one of these you choose. Let's uh, just go with hip hop since we're making sick beats. So it'll load up this default template, and I guess it comes with a uh, a beat to start out with. Let's see how this sounds. All right. So I guess it comes with a sick beat, but I'm going to show you how to make your own. So let's just get rid of that thing. Um, then it comes with all of these tracks already set up in here. So I'll leave those for now. Um, but instead of this one, so GarageBand comes with some uh, robot drummers, <laughs> I guess. Uh, so you can have them do the beats for you. But in this case, we are going to make our own. So let's just uh, hit this plus button here, add a new software instrument. And then, this is the default instrument it always chooses, classic electric piano. Let's go to our drum kit instead. So these are for drums that sound like normal drums. If you want electronic drums, we'll go with one of these. Um, I don't know much about the difference of these. I like the sound of pile driver. I mean, the sound of the name. So let's see what this does. Um, let's just get rid of this one so I don't confuse it. I'll just select it, hit delete, and it's gone. OK, pile driver. So now, next thing I'm going to do, open up the musical typing window. Looks like this. And now when I hit a key on the keyboard, it'll make that sound. If you, right now it's only showing this range of notes. If you want to go an octave lower or higher, just hit that arrow and now. Let's see if there's anything lower. Yeah, nothing down here. So mostly your notes are going to be between here and maybe two more up. No. Nope. Okay, so you got these two sets of keys. So this one. That's our kick drum there. So all of those will make some kind of sound. Okay, well, let's get started. Um, up here, this is where our settings, are, uh, you can change the settings for your song. So the tempo right now is at 75. Uh, I'll leave it there for now. We're at 4-4 time signature and C major, whatever. Um, while I'm doing the beats, I'm going to turn the metronome on so that I can kind of play it with. It'll click along with it so I can hit it right on the beat. Let's try this. Hit record. It'll do a little count in, and then once it gets here, now it's recording. Okay. So I recorded two measures, each one of these little in between each line here is a measure. I'm going to slide this over to the beginning. And now that I've made that, I can click on the the loop tool and just drag it out and it repeats it the whole time. Mhm. Mm okay. Um now there's probably better ways to do this. Let me see what happens if I just record again on top of this, but then play different notes. So I'm going to do the snare this time. Okay, so now it recorded both of those. Let's try it again, which, uh, okay. 
Okay. Mm. Alright, let's try adding in some hi-hat now. <laughs> that was terrible. Okay. Now, if you did something like that, I think the kick drum I got <laughs> pretty close on. Snare was okay. The hi hat, it's it's hard to hit it exactly on the beat. But let's let's just play it back and see how bad it sounds. Ugh. <laughs> okay. So, we do have I'm going to close this so you can see it better. There is a feature on here called Quantize. So I'm going to double click on this and now all the notes open up here. And you can see in detail, I'm going to zoom in even more like that. Now we can see these notes are not lining up with the exact beat. Um, so if you want to make it do that, we can just select, we could select all of them, all the instruments that we did, or I could just do the hi-hats. So let's do that for now. And then right here, time quantize. So this is telling it which note you want it to snap to, the closest line. So 16th would be, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. 16th is each one of these tiny little lines here. So it'll find the closest one of these lines and snap to it once I hit this cue. Here we go. Bam. Did it do it? It did. Now let's play it and see how that sounds. Yeah. And we can see here that this this one snare is a little bit late, quite a bit late. So I could just drag that over there. Now, yeah, you can go ahead and quantize everything. Uh, the danger with that is it does make it sound like a computer did it itself because it's so precise. So if you, you know, if you can get the beat close enough yourself, I think it's probably a preferable sound because then it can have a little bit of variation. Um, but if it's if it's too hard, then yeah, just go ahead with the quantize and get that thing fixed. Okay. So let's say this is our the beat for our first verse. Now we'll have that repeat for what four measures. All right. Let's turn off the the looping. That's this thing up here. I'm going to turn that off so that it doesn't always start at the beginning here. Or let's turn it back on but just loop up there. You just click up here where the numbers are and drag and then It'll change where the loop is. So let's do four more measures starting right here. All right, so I'll uh, let's get the musical typing back up. This will be our, you know, we've got to mix it up a little. You don't want the exact same beat going the whole song. So here we go. Okay, something like that. And then let's uh, add the snare to it. <laughs> what the heck was that? Oh, that's a mess. Retry. <laughs> Uh, I did hit that, uh, some of those just came in too late, so I'm just going to select those, quantize them, and then how about this one instead of the, whoops, whoops, nope, nope, hit the R button. Notice there's not an R here, because R is for record. I'm going to hit this instead of the hi-hat this time.
Okay. How about that? Nice. Then we loop this one out. Okay. Let's see how the whole thing sounds. Hmm. Notice down here, you can kind of see on the edge that there's like a blank space there. So I might want to add one more hit right there with the hi hat. See how you got a we got an empty spot in there? Let's zoom in on it. There's not a hi hat hit right there. So if I hold Command on the keyboard, see how my mouse turns into a pencil? Boom! Just add one in there. We can shorten it so it's the same length as these others. And now that I did that, it also changed all the looped versions of it too. Cool. Okay. Um, I don't want to listen to the whole thing again, though. And this guy here... Oh, you can't change the looped version. You have to go to the original. And let's just slide this over so it hits right on the beat there. Okay, there you go. There's the beginnings of your sick beat. So, so let's say we got this pile driver sound. Uh, what if we want to try out some of these other, others? It's not too late. You don't have to choose before you do it. I can switch to Crate Digger, no problem. So it's still playing the same beat, but it's using these sounds instead, or any one of these. And also, another thing you can do if you're like, you know what, instead of this hi-hat sound, I want all of these to be something else. You just select the ones you want, drag them up to a different keys. See how you got the white piano keys up here? And now it's all a different instrument, or a different, you know, key on that instrument. So that's an option for you. Uh, anything you do on here, it's easy to change your mind and fix it. Okay, last thing, you're going to want to be able to share this song somehow. <clears throat> you're going to want to make it longer, first of all, but for this demonstration, we're calling this good enough. Um, one thing to keep in mind, I don't know why GarageBand did this, but right here you have this slider that zooms in and out of the timeline. And if you zoom all the way out, see on the edge there's this little arrow, and you can hover over it and your mouse changes. This is the end of the song. And I believe if I were to export this right now, I would have this much of silence because GarageBand expects this to be the end of the song. So let's just click on this. See, I, I just don't know why they put it so close to this thing that it's hard to see. And then even when I drag it over, well, now we can see it better. So I'm just going to put that a little after the actual end of the song. And now our song will be as long as it should be. Okay, so to export it, we go to Share, Export Song to Disk, and then we've got these options. So we can put our name, SIGBEAT001, choose where you want it, uh, you know, you can put a desktop folder, wherever you want, and then you choose the format. So WAVE and AIF, those are the two highest quality, they're both uncompressed. Uh, if you want a lower quality but smaller file size, you can choose one of these. Um, for this kind of thing, it's really short, and we're probably going to use it as a beat to combine with something else, so I would have it either Wave or AF. It doesn't really matter which of those. Um, okay, export, and then it does its thing, and now just go to that folder that you saved it in, and you'll have a song for you. Okay, see you later.